Hello and welcome to Transformation Ground Control. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm here with Parisa Noble. Uh, Parisa, welcome back from maternity leave. Thank you so much. I am excited to be back. It has been a long while. <laughs> it has. What, two months, I think, since, uh, or six weeks? I can't remember yep. how long you were gone. It seems like a longer, but. Yeah, it was about like six, seven weeks. So definitely some time. The little one's about to be two months old here and it's just flying by. I can't believe it. <laughs> time yeah. flies. Well, congratulations on being a mother for the second time. Thank it's exciting. you. Thank you. Yes, it's been good going from one to two. I was definitely nervous, but it is not as hard as I thought it would be. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's good. And now now uh, your other your son has a, has a playmate now, which will be good. That'll come in handy as they get older. Uh, right. They can keep each other occupied. That's what I hear. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, well, great to have you back. It, it was uh I was telling Kyler, I think last week or the week before in, in our episodes that uh, it was very difficult to not have a co-host or not have someone with you uh, during these podcasts. So it's good to, good to have you back. Yeah, good. I'm happy to be back. I'm sure it's, it's definitely easy to bounce around ideas when there's someone else there to talk it through. So definitely yeah. happy to be back. I missed the show. I missed you. I missed the audience. So um, I'm excited to jump back into it. Yeah. And w me too. And while you were out or right as you were coming back, I suppose it was, there was a uh, the Colonial Pipeline here in the United States um, had a cybersecurity breach and obviously a lot of organizations that are going through digital transformations or just managing an IT function in general um, are concerned about cybersecurity and it's becoming an increasing concern for a lot of organizations. So maybe we could start there and talk a little bit about that hack and what it means to other, other organizations throughout the world. Oh yeah, I mean, I just can't even believe that this happen it's definitely first we started with the solar winds hack and then now this happens and just these hacks on such a large scale it puts it in a perspective what we're up against when it comes to cyber cyber threats and cybersecurity. um but i mean i was looking into it and the colonial pipeline is huge i mean it, i read somewhere that it passes through three million barrels of fuel a day three million a day and it's, it goes from Houston to New York. So it, it gives almost half of the fuel supply to the East Coast. So for that to go offline is no small, uh, it's not, a, it's a big deal. I guess I could just put it like that. It's a very big deal. And it, you know, I don't know if you looked into who is behind the cyber attack, but they call themselves dark side. Did you, hear, did you read that? No, no, I didn't see this part of it. No. Yeah, they call themselves Dark Side, which I'm like, that's from Star Wars, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd assume that's where they got it. Yeah, so I'm just envisioning like Darth Vader sitting behind a, a computer screen just trying to hack everybody. But I don't know, scary thought nonetheless. And it sounds like it was a ransomware attack. So I thought, you know, you're you're probably aware of the kind of different types of cyber attacks that can happen and maybe we can d dive into what is ransomware for those that might not know what is it yeah so it, it's typically what will happen is you'll have an outside party who takes over your um your systems and a lot of times it could be it could be a web domain it could be your actual systems and and they lock you out and basically you can't get back in uh, because i've taken complete control of those systems and what they want is they want you to pay them money um, in exchange for releasing the system or the domain uh, back to you. And so it's, uh, you know, that's where the, the term the term comes from. Wow. Well, I know that um, they're back online now. And I'm curious, like, how much money did they pay this Dark Va Darth Vader guy or group? Who knows? But it's it's just crazy to think that that is just one of the many ways that these hackers can get into your systems and, and kind of put a halt on your operations. And when it's operations that are to this scale, it's definitely frightening. Um, I know they closed it down. I also read they closed it down because they were worried that the ransomware would like spread to the system. So I didn't know that would happen. That is even able to happen. So do they like plant it somewhere and then it could just completely take over? the whole system if you don't stop it I, that's what i've heard or read um i'm not familiar with that myself um but i think there is software that is used in the whole attempt to take over the systems and i'm not sure the nuances of how it works i'm not sure you know that many people do which is part of the problem yeah. that um, is my problem 
makes yeah. me want to take a cybersecurity class, you know, or even just, you know, I don't know. Cybersecurity is probably a hot career to be in. Because yeah, I would think so. Just, you know, with COVID, I think, uh, you know, Daryl Crockett from our team, when we had her on talking about the solar winds breach uh, several weeks ago, um, I think it was episode one or two, she was on one of our first episodes of this podcast. She was talking about um, yeah, how common it's become and how these these hackers are escalating really since COVID. And part of that's because, you know, there's more cybersecurity exposure and risk because people are working remotely still. And uh, there's just more opportunity, you know, more unemployed people, uh, people with too much time on their hands, people, you know, that find ways to make money. And this is one way to make money, I suppose, is to go hack someone's system and take it over and demand money in exchange for it. So um, do, were these uh, particular, was this particular group based in the U.S. where this pipeline is or was this an outside uh country i think it was outside the country but i can't speak for sure um i i feel like i heard that on the news but i almost am speculating so i'm not sure 100 percent, but i know that whoever they are they know what they're doing and it's all of these hackers i mean anybody who's trying to do it they it's just gotten it's become such an intricate process that they can almost infiltrate what seems like any organization if they really wanted to um I don't know. So I, it makes, it sparks the question in my mind of, you know, obviously 2020 was a huge catalyst in how quickly we adapted to new technologies when everybody started working from home and started doing these virtual conferences, virtual meetings, and, you know, did the cybersecurity excel at the same rate as, you know, the cyber threat or as at the same rate as, us adapting to this new technological world, you know, it feels right. like it's not keeping up with it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's absolutely true. And it's, you know, a technological gap, you know, as far as not keeping up with uh, tightening up your systems and the security behind it. But then there's also the, you know, the human and behavioral part of it too, you know, as far as just making sure your team is aware of these sorts of threats and, you know, phishing scams and things like that, things of that nature. So uh, it's both technological and, and human or change management related for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was speaking to somebody I, I know about what their company is doing in kind of the loo of all the cyber threats in the world. And one thing that their IT team has started doing is sending out, you know, practice phishing emails to their whole team so that their team can kind of be trained and just become more cognizant of you know, what is a phishing email like? Like, how can you tell the difference? So, you know, take that one to the bank. If you, if you are in IT, it's a good idea to start training the human side as well as tightening up your systems. Yeah. And not just educating them, but uh, also testing, you know, testing them and seeing, you know, where the exposures are so that if you're going to, if someone's going to have a lapse or make a mistake, hopefully it's done with your own team testing or, you know, faking a, a scam or a, a security breach. So um, that's what a, what a lot of organizations are doing. In fact, we're, that's something we're starting to do as an organization too, just to ensure that we, you know, as we grow, you have more people throughout the world, it becomes more of a risk uh, for, for us and really any organization that, that has, you know, our, our scale and, and breadth or, or even larger for sure. Right. right. And that kind of takes me to my next question is what would you, I mean, you're kind of in the IT space, uh, what would you say to leaders, both in the public and private sector, um, as we kind of enter this new world of crime that is all happening online? What would you say to them? Yeah, well, I'd say, you know, you want to make sure you, you have pretty clear uh, cybersecurity systems and processes in place, uh, especially if you're going through a transformation and you're, you know, moving all your data from one system to another. I mean, there's there's risk there. As far as you know, sensitive data, financial data, customer data, product data, all that stuff, um, you're sort of digging that up and moving it to new systems. That's always a risk. And uh, if you're moving it to the cloud, you know you want to make sure you understand you know who your hosting provider is and what those security protocols and processes are, and make sure you're comfortable with that. And if you're still running, you know, say on-premise systems or systems that you're managing within your four walls and you have people outside the physical office that are accessing it, um, or even if they're within the office, you just want to make sure that you, you know, account for the fact that there's, there's risk in each of those scenarios and, and, uh, you know, just building that 
that competency and that workflow into a transformation plan is, is super important. Yeah, that's good advice. And I know you just recently had a conversation with Wayne about operating models. Maybe it's time to start incorporating cybersecurity into the operating model that you're running off of. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that is absolutely true. And uh, that, that sort of segues into, you know, this show and this episode and what we're going to cover today. Um, we, we have, we started uh, while you were out on maternity leave, we, we started live streaming um, Q and a interviews um, on LinkedIn and YouTube, uh, Facebook and Twitter. And so if you go to, you know, my profile on, on LinkedIn or connect with me, follow me on LinkedIn um, and or uh, YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, you'll see this live stream every Friday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. We, we've been live streaming these Q&As and we bring on a, a different guest every every week. And last week we had uh, Stuart Robb on and we talked about digital transformation best practices in general, sort of, you know, what are the best digital transformation strategies and tactics. And then we had Wayne Holtham from our Asia Pacific office in Brisbane, Australia. I did a live stream with him, a Q&A talking about uh, operating models, um, which I used to think operating models were the same as business process improvement, but it's it's not. But if you, you're familiar with the term business process improvement or reengineering, it's somewhat similar to that. Um, and it's probably the thing you could, might be able to relate it to the most. So had a great conversation with him, really interesting. I mean, he's, he's a smart guy and his, his brain goes a million different directions. And so the interview was super, super interesting. We had really good engagement from the audience. We had uh, several hundred people watching it live and contributing questions as we were as we were talking. So really good segment. We're actually going to share that here in today's episode. Um, we're going to take a quick break. And we're, when we come back, we'll cut to that clip and show you that interview with Wayne, which is super interesting. So if you're going through a transformation, thinking about business processes and your future state operating model and how your organization and your operations need to look in the future, this is really a, a really helpful interview. So uh, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we will have Wayne Holcomb on the show. So you're listening to Transformation Ground Control. We'll be right back. 